Hey guys, Scott with Air Gunner Reviews. So now for the AEA Harpoon, I now have nine air cartridges. So we are going to be testing these for reliability. Now the first four of them that have these caps on them, these have had air in them for three weeks, just a little over three weeks. These other five that I have are various times that all have been purchased over a week ago and filled over a week ago. So as we know from other videos that we've watched on YouTube with the AEA Defender, these cartridges haven't been exactly reliable all the time. Although in fairness, the newer cartridges that I had purchased uh, for, the, these are the cartridges, these are the second generation cartridges, have been much better. Um, in honestly, the last four I bought, I've never had a problem with them. Uh, but previous to that, they've always been a, 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 an issue, holding air, of course. Now we've got nine of them. Now I've already pre-recorded this, so we're gonna kind of roll the tape. Um, but exactly three weeks ago, we're gonna see if they were reliable. Now, there's a lot of videos, and not just on this, but on several air guns, you see the best of the best um, um, where it hits the target all the time and how accurate it is. This is like a real world test. I have edited it. My editing is only for the purpose of speeding up the film, but you're going to see me sighting it in. You're going to see where the, you know, where the slugs hit each time uh, in, and that type of stuff. So maybe a little boring, but it's going to be kind of a quick one uh, to watch. Anyhow, let's just get to the uh, video and let's watch it. And then afterwards, we're just going to discuss uh, a little bit and some of the other discoveries I found with this, with the safety, which I do talk about in the film, but we're going to further discuss this. Um, seems that once you cock it once and you fire one off, you cannot, re uh, you cannot put it on safety. Again, uh, even though you have a loaded round in there. We're going to discuss that a little further. Let's watch the film, and then let's come back here, do a little discussion. Thanks for watching. All right, first test here. Going to cock it. Away from everybody. Back down. Let's see what we have. The feet per second on this bad guy. Four hundred and forty-two point five feet per second. Yeah, All right. Awesome. First time we're gonna try to sight this little red dot in. Yeah. Here we go. Any idea? Oh, I see it. Number two, adjusted it up a little bit. Let's see what happens here. About the same spot. Oh, a little higher. All right, we got to go up a little higher with it. Okay, try it again. Oh, that's not bad. So we got to go over to the left a little bit. Pretty easy to adjust because it's got the up arrow right. So here we just got to go to the left. A little bit.
Okay, let's see how we do this time. Up oh, too far. Yep. Okay. So this time, I'm going to do both barrels at one. I'm going to come much closer. We can find a spot for this to sit here. I want to do this from from the hip, like you know, like somebody standing there, and I just want to blast them. Right from like this, and both of them firing at one time. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. So I missed them. But boy, they stayed really even. So hip shot, you, of course, that's not a whole body. That's just a, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. The first thing I noticed with this is it's easier. To, every time I cock it, it gets a little easier to cock. Oh, really? It's yeah, it's definitely easy to cock now. Yep. Um, but the other thing is if you, once you cock it, you can put it on safety which is good, but if you fire one and you want to put it back on safety, you can't. You have to fire them both. Yeah, you cannot put it back on safety if you've only fired one. That's a little strange. You got to make sure that you fire them both. Closer than I was before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, up. About 12 paces, which I'm sure if I took a tape measure, would be about 15 feet, approximately. All right, we're on fire. Let's see what happens. Last one. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Much better. For a four-inch barrel. It's not bad. I mean, I think it's got some accuracy to it. It's more me, you know, yeah. it's it's a lot of oomph to them. So you just gotta get used to it, practicing with it. All right. See if we can get this in the left. Yeah, let's see if we can hit this beast. Oh, yeah. That's... Oh, yeah. Perfect shot. Not through. There it is right there. It's in quite a bit. And a big old crack right there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this uh, this film that we did. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the slug itself. 239 grain slug, uh, 50 caliber, uh, hollow point. Um, probably not the best to use to calculate um, foot pounds of energy only because you get a lot of drag from the front of it. Also, you notice that we did a, it was actually a two by six we shot at, uh, didn't all the way go through. Well, that is probably most likely the, um, the slug itself being a hollow point, not very solid right there. These are made for expansion. Uh, I did order some new ones that are not a hollow point. Should be interesting to see. I'm pretty sure it's going to go straight through that two by six uh, with no problem. I think it's the the, uh, the slug itself, not so much, uh, not enough power to do it. Uh, as far as the cartridges, nine cartridges, 
Four of those have been filled for three weeks, exactly three weeks. Um, and it was also one of those cartridges that were already in the uh, gun that I shot, and um, that's what I chronied. So I, I've got to tell you, these are pretty reliable, at least, and this isn't real long-term storage. All the other ones, of course, as I said before, were um, over a week, but, but purchased at various times. So um, between a week and two weeks, um, they've been stored so again, not very long time, but three weeks is very promising and all nine of them went off. Uh, that is awesome. That probably would have never happened with the AEA Defender if I had nine of those. So the cartridges are built much better. I attribute it to this kind of bolt right here on the top of it. Most people felt it was the back where the disc burst is. I never saw that to be true. Um, these guys right here, you can get these off, they're really tight but I found a lot of leakage through here. I've also found some leaks through the, uh, the front of it. Um, it, it, it. This gets really compressed with air, and I believe after a while it gets a beat down and starts leaking. My first four that I had on the Gen 2 were terrible. They, um, they never held air right from the get-go. Uh, the newer ones, like I stated before, yeah, they're, they're, they've been much better. But reliability right now, um, I am not convinced uh, in any certain um, aspects of this that they will not hold air. It's been reliable. Uh, future, future testing, longer term, will determine that. So far, this is very, very promising as far as I'm concerned. Now, as far as the, um, the uh, let me just get these out of the way here, the shotgun. There, I did find, and I kind of talked briefly about it in the film, is um, the safety. So right now, I cannot put the safety on because it is not fully cocked. Even if I were to do this and then close it back up, I did not cock it, so um, you cannot put the safety on. When it's fully cocked, and by the way, there is nothing in this. It's completely empty, as you can tell. And I fold it, cock it, and I put it down. Now I'm able to put it on to safety. However, when you take it off safety, you fire one shot. Now if you want to put it back on safety, you cannot put it back on safety. It will not allow you to until you take the second shot or remove the cartridge and then dry fire it. I discovered that because my very first shot when I was sighting it in, I took the shot and I realized I had to adjust it. I went to put it on safety, of course, and then I couldn't. Okay, now I just want to talk a little bit about firing technique or shooting technique on this because it definitely is different from your normal weapon where you're looking down your sights and you're keeping your center of your sight to the center of your target. In this case, you can't do this with a double barrel shotgun, something I kind of realized after I had already done all my shots. Um, it's hard to think of everything when you first uh, start shooting this, but it's one thing about watching something over and watching um, how you do things. So uh, one point here is you see my last shot was over to um, over here to the left. Now I was aiming to the center of the target. Now just keep in mind uh, again this is unloaded, so I'm going to be pointing this at me. I don't want anybody to say, ah, oh, you shouldn't be pointing your weapon. Never should point a weapon. It is empty. It is empty. My triggers, my hands never, nowhere near the trigger. But for me to show you, okay, so normally this would be in the center with your regular um, weapon. However, where you want your dot to be is going to be over here. So you want that dot basically, put this down for a second, you want your red dot because your left barrel shoots first, you want it over here to the right of it to hit to the center. Then when you shoot your second um, projectile with the right barrel, you want to do the opposite. You want to go to the left of it, and then you'll hit the center. So it does seem that if you keep it um, about an inch, inch and a half away, approximately, you are going to hit it. So it is a little, um, you just have to think about that. Left barrel shoots first, go to the right of it to shoot it, and then vice versa um, with your right barrel. Anyhow, 
that's about it for this evening. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, one other thing, because I know I'm going to get questions about it. This is a woofo. <laughs> it sounds like something my dog would have. Um, yeah, but anyway, it's called a woofo. Um, it, it, what I like about this, it was a little pricey. It's about $113. You can buy it on Amazon. I'm going to put a link down there. If you go through my link, I do make a couple of dollars on it. Maybe not even a couple of dollars, uh, but it doesn't cost you anymore. <clears throat> Anyhow, <coughs> excuse me. Very good. It's a shake awake. So there's no on or off button on it. You pick it up. That dot is ready for you. As soon as you bring it up to, to you, you put it back down within uh, one or two minutes. It shuts back off. It, 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 you don't even have to think about it. That's what I like about it. That was why I bought it. If you want to use this for uh, a home defense um, you want it to be ready. You don't have to be pressing any buttons. That is why you're paying a little extra money for it. Comes in this nice little um, box, and in here it has a cover, so you can cover it if you like to. I don't bother with it. Um, but and then it comes with all your tools and accessories and all that good stuff. Hey guys, thank you for watching once again. I appreciate it and take care. And I will catch you on the next episode. Catch you later.